So the thing that really surprised me about sailing boats is when I worked out that they can travel into the wind. Now I always understood that, you know, if you open your sails at sea, the wind's at your back and pushes you, off you go. It's amazing, propelled by the elements. But then I realized that we had worked out, as humans, how no matter which direction the wind's coming from, we can adjust and you can actually sail in the direction you want to, roughly, no matter which way the wind's blowing from. I didn't realize that. I thought the wind always has to be at your back. Now the same with trading and investing. I always thought that you have to buy an asset when it's low, hopefully it goes up in value, and you sell it when it's high. That's your only option. The wind has to be at your back. But no, then I realized that even if the price of an asset is falling, we can make money off it. It's called short selling. I made videos about that. So we know that the captain of a boat needs quite a lot of skills. He needs to know how to rig the sails and how to do all sorts of practical things on the boat to make sure that he can actually adapt to the conditions. But what's his big skill? One of his biggest skills is knowing what the weather's doing. Where's that wind coming from? What time of year is it? What's the season? What are the natural patterns of the weather? Because he's out there in charge of this boat. And depending on those circumstances, on the context he finds himself in, then he makes the changes to the actual boat and hopefully goes in the right direction. So as an investor, what's the equivalent of that? So sure, we know how to place a trade and how to set a stop loss. And we know these sort of practical things of how we actually make trades and interact with the markets. But realistically, what's another main skill of the trader? Much like the captain who has to check the weather, the trader has to check the context of the markets. What's going on at the moment? Should I be using a lot of leverage, a little leverage? Is it time for risk on or risk off? How much of my money do I want in the markets? Do I take some out? Is it time to buy or time to sell? So recently a storm's actually broken out. It's not just brewing anymore, it's pretty much on us. Only one of the three people in my portfolio is actually profitable. If I look at all the major investors on eToro, the sort of OGs, one after another has been struggling. Everyone seems to be down. Some trade currencies, some trade, I don't know, cryptos, some trade indices, some trade stocks. US stocks, British stocks, everyone across the board seems to be struggling. So what do you do if you're a captain, a sea captain? So he's got two main options. If he's out at sea and he's stuck in a storm, what does he do? He takes down his sails. He reduces his exposure to the wind, to the force which is causing all of this volatility, and he just tries to ride it out. Now if he can, he tries to make it to a safe haven, either a natural harbour or a man-made one where something is making the waters calmer. He drops anchor there and just waits till the storm passes. So what do we do as investors? We're seeing much the same thing. People panicking because they don't know which way the wind's coming from. Are the markets going up? Are they going down? We're not sure. I think it's very hard to make a bullish case right now. We really don't know what's going to happen. So you can look for tea leaves, you look for signs, you can look at the length of women skirts, you know, is it a buy signal? All that's pablum. It means nothing. The only thing that means something is that there is no playbook for the economy where we are. I am in the UK and it is amazing that this is a G7 country that over the last six days has experienced disorderly moves in the currency and in bond yields, a loss of confidence in policy making, now direct central bank intervention and um, an IMF warning. So we see a lot of people trying to move in towards safe havens. What's the safe haven we've been moving into? Globally, it's hard to tell because nothing seems safe, but definitely the dollar. Now this is causing problems. Everyone's parking their boats, their ship, their portfolio in an asset which they feel is safe, the dollar. But as we've seen this week, look at the news. The UK, massive problems. China, problems. Euro, problems. Because the dollar is getting so strong. So the thing is that as we all move our money into this safe haven globally, it's actually causing an even bigger problem. And the dollar's acting like a wrecking ball and it's taking down almost other economies. Well, the euro has hit parity with the US dollar a first in over 20 years. The exchange rate between the two currencies is now just one cent apart. The euro slid to a 20-year low against the US dollar this morning, trading at below 99 US cents. The US dollar, which is being an absolute bulldozer across emerging and developed markets. I mean, so this really, this weakness is, really isn't contained just to China. I mean, we've seen the Japanese yen, it's at a, you know, heading towards 145. Uh, the Korean won is being smashed. Uh, the Canadian dollar hit a fresh two-year low overnight. Sovereign debt crises are maybe on the cards. Where 
governments actually can't afford to service the debt they've taken out. And we're looking at sort of collapse and stuff. These are terrifying things. But in the meantime, even though this is happening, people are still trying to make money. Now, it's interesting to see how we've been reacting on eToro. Who are the people who are being copied and who's doing well? So I look at people like this, like Miroslav. So Miroslav's stats are actually very small. Look at the numbers he's making. He's not making huge gains, but there's 390 people copying him and they're investing between one and two million dollars in him already. If you look at his portfolio, what's he trading? It's all euro against the US dollar, selling it. So it's all about that US dollar trend, that US dollar strength, you see? So I think people are prepared to copy someone and have like lower returns just so they make some money, just so it looks safer, it looks stable. They want low risk and they want some rewards. They're looking for those safe havens. Now, whilst I say that most people are looking for safe havens, it's not all of us. So check this one out. I found this guy, Stanley Taiwan. Now he actually has two portfolios. You can see down here, he has one high risk, high return portfolio. That's for the people who wanna take the risk. They want those big returns. They're willing to risk it all. They see his stats and they think, you know, high risk, high return is for me. He's also got a low risk, low return portfolio. So he's running two strategies at the same time. One high risk, high reward, one low risk, low reward. Which one do you think's got most copiers? So the high risk, high reward, he's got 1,531 copiers. The low risk, how many do you think it's got in these turbulent times where there's a huge economic storm happening? How many has it got? Zero. Zero copiers on the low risk platform. Now quickly, one of the things I did notice whilst looking at Stanley's portfolio, because this is meant to be his high risk, high reward portfolio, is his stats don't seem that volatile and his risk scores actually seem fairly low. So I wondered what was going on. I didn't want to get this wrong. So I got in touch with Stanley and I just asked him directly. So his reply was that last year he tried to apply to be a popular investor with eToro, but eToro knocked him back saying your risk scores are too high. You have to keep lowish risk scores to be a popular investor. It's how eToro sort of protects its customers. So this year, his plan with this portfolio is to actually lower the volatility of the portfolio, make it a bit more conservative, lower those risk scores and actually become a popular investor, hopefully. So I'm going to add him to a watch list and sort of keep an eye on him. I think, however, that many of the people who copied him, all those people we saw copying him, may not have known this. I think they may have been going for the high risk, high reward strategy as so many of us do when we're new. Now, why do we do this? If you have got $500 and you invest, you make a 20% return. 20% is a lot of money, right? But what is that? That's $100 you've got at the end of the year. Is $100 enough to interest any new person? Not really. If we have $500, we wanna make 300% return. We wanna come out at the end of the year with $1,500. Maybe if we make 1,000, that might actually make some difference to our life. $100 isn't gonna make much difference. So when we're new, we very rarely have a lot of money. So we're putting in money and we're still going for that high risk, high reward mentality. Now, is that a good idea? I don't know anymore. I really don't know and I don't want to advise. This is not financial advice. Trying the high risk, high reward method, I've been caught out many, many times and lost money in cryptos, in NFTs, in the stock market, trading gold, using too much leverage. It's happened again and again. Now, what's happening at the moment is that even if we're using very low leverage, even if we're trying to take little risk, the markets themselves are risky. There is a storm upon us. People are scrambling to try and find out what do I do with my money? Even if I take my money completely out of the markets, do I keep it in euros or should I trade it into US dollars at the moment? Because they're going up so much against all other currencies. So at the moment, the volatility, the risk is just inherent more than at any other time. So there we are, what are we gonna do? I have no idea. Crypto's not really a good alternative store of value at all, at least at the moment. They may be, but I can't see the big powers that be letting an alternative system really emerge. The Treasury Department's Financial Stability Oversight Committee just out with a new warning saying crypto assets could pose a, quote, risk to the stability of the U.S. financial system if their interconnection with the traditional financial system uh, or or overall scale were to grow without appropriate regulation. NFTs, the metaverse, what a creative potential, but it's not there yet. It's not there yet. It's not ready. We've got years, I think, before that's actually something that people really want to use. Uh, then we've got the equities markets. They seem to be tumbling. Maybe later on when it all does tumble, I don't know, not financial advice, then I can buy Coca-Cola shares and, you know, Tesla shares and live off dividends. Fine art, I don't have the money to buy fine art. Property, people are talking about that being in trouble. You know, gold is on its way down. 
silver's on its way down. All these alternative kind of investments which people talk about are on their way down. So where's the safe harbour? If you've found one, if you've found a lovely place to drop anchor and ride out this storm, please let me know because I'll sail right there and I'll join you. Do let me know in the comments if you've found one. See you. Hope you're all well. Bye. Okay.